Today, new CPU competition is finally here. A world first NVIDIA GPU, next-gen APUs release date, and next-gen Ryzen APUs are way better than anyone thought. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, Qualcomm's new ARM-based Snapdragon X series notebooks are officially here, and we finally have some reviews. With that said, there aren't many of them at launch, apparently thanks to all the backlash and issues with Microsoft's new recall feature, or at least it guaranteed it would happen. Regardless, we do get a serious look at the new chips, as well as how well we can expect ARM to work in Windows. And the question I think we should ask is, should AMD and Intel be worried? To answer that, let's first go over the chip. For starters, these reviews are based on the 12-core Snapdragon X Elite chip, which comes with a 3.8 GHz multi-thread boost and 4.3 GHz dual-core boost, as well as 42 MB of total cache. It also comes with an Adreno iGPU with compute performance up to 4.6 teraflops, and the notebook every reviewer tested was the ASUS VivoBook S15. When it comes to performance, Qualcomm's new processor actually performs extremely well, especially when looking at apps that can run natively on ARM. I mean, we're talking Qualcomm's new chip trades blows with both Intel and AMD's current chips. But even when emulation is used, they perform very well. That's not to say that they don't take a performance hit, but it's a night and day difference than previous attempts at bringing ARM to Windows. It's really clear that Microsoft has been working hard to make this happen as a pushback to Apple. With that said, x86 emulation isn't perfect, as there did seem to be some stuttering issues with things like games. And this is where things seem to to go south for Qualcomm. According to reviews, the Snapdragon's integrated GPU is one of its weaker points. Don't get me wrong, while it loses to both AMD and Intel's current chips, it doesn't lose by all that much. Though, don't forget that both companies are planning new releases this year, so Qualcomm's success could be short-lived. Still, this is an impressive chip in both performance and battery life, and I've got to say that both Intel and AMD need to step up their game. And if you think that's cool, wait until you see my favorite new course with today's sponsor, Brilliant. And it's their new course on how large language models work, which is what powers modern AI chatbots like ChatGPT. They take you through all the facets of LLMs, like how they predict the next word, tokenization, and more. But that's just the start of Brilliant's incredible online platform. They have tons more courses on computer science, but the reason I personally love Brilliant is actually because of their hands-on approach. See, they don't teach you like other platforms. Instead, they get you to actually do it yourself with their fun and engaging puzzles. So I learned by actually solving things myself. And whether you're a beginner or expert, Brilliant has you covered. So join me and millions more at brilliant.org slash gamermeld or use the QR code and you'll get a 30-day free trial. Plus, when you sign up at brilliant.org slash gamermeld, you'll get 20% off your premium membership for life. Next up for today, a world first NVIDIA GPU just launched. Remember, in a recent video, I discussed NVIDIA's new program that makes it much easier to find enthusiast level GPUs for a small form factor build. In there, NVIDIA outlined requirements of no more than 304 millimeters wide, 151 millimeters tall, and 2.5 slots thick. Well, forget all of that because Zephyr just announced a world's first ITX compatible 4070, and it only comes with one fan. The GPU is a dual slot design that measures just 172 millimeters long and 123 millimeters tall. The card comes with a custom shortened PCB along with a single 8 pin connector, and believe it or not, it doesn't seem to suffer any real performance penalty, though it obviously doesn't come with any kind of overclock, and it's able to do this with a single fan keeping the GPU down to a cool 73 degrees Celsius. All in all, the new GPU is looking really impressive for any small form factor build, though you may want to double check clearance given it's slightly taller than the bracket. Next up, if you saw my recent video, you know that B&H just shared the pre-order date for the upcoming desktop Ryzen 9000 CPUs, and that's July 31st. It's still up in the air if they really mean pre-order or actually on sale, as a pre-order means that AMD missed their July deadline, unless they count pre-order as the actual release. Regardless, we now have a new date for their next-gen APUs. This one comes from Best Buy with the ZenBook S16 Notebook. As you can see, according to this, it's not just set for pre-order, but actual release on July 15th, meaning next-gen APUs look to be coming in less than a month. 
And lastly for today, AMD's next-gen APUs are set to be way better than we originally thought, especially when it comes to the integrated GPU. This story comes from the notebook maker GPD, who released benchmarks for their upcoming Duo OLED laptop, which comes with AMD's flagship Ryzen AI 9 HX370. I still can't believe that's what they're calling it. Either way, while the company likely wasn't supposed to release these yet, they're here now, so let's go over it. Starting things off, they share Cinebench 2024 scores that show some unbelievable performance. As you can see, the HX370 scored a whopping 124 in single core, which is just one point away from the desktop 7950X. What's so wild about this is that the 7950X has a boost clock of 5.7 GHz while the HX370 only gets to 5.1, yet it's still at the same level. Moving on to multi-threaded, you can see that the new APU actually beats AMD's 16 core 5950 50X. Now, that's obviously not current gen, but remember that the HX370 isn't just 12 cores, but 8 of those 12 cores are their Zen 5C little cores, yet it can beat a 16 core CPU. And the performance doesn't stop there, as they also show GPU performance in time spy. As you can see here, AMD's new iGPU scores a very impressive 4221, which is way better than that 3600 plus we saw not too long ago. Not only that, but according to GPD, the Radeon 890M in this APU is a whopping 36% faster than current gen. Now, I know it does have 33% more cores, so the prospects for RDNA 3.5 being more than a slight upgrade aren't looking all that great right now, but still, a 36% performance boost is a huge generational jump, especially given we're talking about an integrated GPU. And speaking of that iGPU, when we move back here, we can see that it crushes the discrete 2050 and actually gets close to NVIDIA's 3050. Basically, when AMD releases their Strix Halo with 40 CUs, it's going to destroy the GPU market. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's next-gen APUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And as always, have a great day!